In this screencast, I'm going to cover the lymph system. Now remember, I'm not going to go over this in class, so after you go through this, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Either call me or talk to me in class, because if you have the questions, some other people might have the same question. The lymph system. The lymph system is going to kind of tie in the cardiovascular system with the immune system. It kind of ties those two areas together. Now the lymphatic system is similar to the cardiovascular system in that the vessels of the lymph system branch off and they literally go close to every cell in the body, similar to uh, capillaries. And there's things called lymph capillaries that are going to sit close to the regular capillaries that we learned about in the cardiovascular system. What are the purposes of the lymph system? They're going to collect this extra interstitial fluid, and I'll talk about where that comes from. And they're going to return that interstitial fluid after it's traveled through the lymph system back into the blood supply. It's also going to check for microorganisms. So again, here's our connection between the cardiovascular system and the lymph system. As it travels through the lymph system, it's going to go through lymph nodes, which I know you've all heard of, and there are going to be white blood cells there that are going to check it, check the lymph for any microorganisms. It's also going to be involved in the absorption of fat. Uh, when fat goes from your digestive system, it doesn't directly go into your bloodstream, it actually goes into the lymph system. And we'll get into that more when we talk about digestion. All right, so looking at the first one, here's an arterial and here's a capillary. And this drawing's more complicated than you need, but it was the simplest one I could find. Remember, we talked about the capillaries that things diffuse out into the cells, like oxygen and so on. So here you have diffusion out. In order for things to diffuse out like that, they have to be dissolved in a fluid. So fluid will also leave the capillary along with the oxygen and other nutrients that will leave or diffuse out of the capillaries into the cells. So what has to happen is, as it diffuses out, we have to get this fluid back. So it will diffuse out here at the arterial end of the capillary. Now most of it will be will be diffused back into will diffuse back into the uh, venous end of the capillary about 85 percent so 85 percent of the fluid that came out here will be uh, diffused back into the vein end of the capillary so what happens to the rest of it if the rest of it was just left there we'd have constant swelling or edema so what happens is this is where the lymph system comes in the other 15 percent will go into a lymphatic vessel, a lymphatic capillary. So this is why you need to have a lymphatic capillary close to a regular capillary to get this extra 15%. And as you'll notice, the lymph will then start to travel, okay, start to travel through the lymph system. And you notice here you see, you see valves just like we see in veins, and that's going to help keep the lymph going towards the heart and back towards the bloodstream. So the 15% of the fluid not reabsorbed by the cardiovascular system is absorbed in the lymph capillaries. Again, this drawing shows you how the lymph capillaries are closely related to the other capillaries. Lymph is the interstitial fluid in the lymph system. Lymph capillaries have valves similar to veins, which I mentioned. Again, there's not muscle here, so we need a way to keep the lymph moving in the direction we want it to, and those lymph capillaries are going to do that and they're going to keep the lymph moving towards the heart. Do lymph vessels have pressure? I pretty much answer that. No, they don't. So again, that's why we need the valves to keep the lymph moving. The breathing mechanism moves the lymph back towards the heart, as does muscle contraction. You'll notice that these three methods are the same methods we talked about when we talked about how blood moves from the veins back to the heart. Now let's talk a little bit about the drainage. The lymph capillaries will dump into larger vessels, so they will unbranch into superficial and deep lymphatic ducts. So again, what you see is when you get lymph forming in the hands, they'll go in the capillaries, and then they'll dump into bigger vessels and bigger vessels and bigger vessels. And you'll see the same thing from the legs, <coughs> excuse me, and the other regions of the body. The superficial and deep lymphatics then dump into two main ducts, the thoracic and the right lymphatic duct. So the thoracic and the right lymphatic duct. 
So again, everything's draining back into these two major ducts. The thoracic duct is going to collect from most of the body. If you look back at this picture, you'll see the thoracic duct is going to drain everything from the legs on the left side and from the left side of the head. So all of this will drain back into that thoracic duct. And the right lymphatic duct will drain back from the arm, the right side, right head, and down part of the torso. And it will dump everything, all this lymph, this 15%, back into the left subclavian vein, which will return it to the blood supply and return it to the heart. The right lymphatic duct collects from the upper right side. It dumps lymph into the right subclavian vein, which again gets it back into the blood supply and takes it back to the heart. So this keeps the system closed. And what that means is we don't lose that 15%. We don't lose that 15% that wasn't reabsorbed back into the capillary. It brings it all back together. Now, as it goes through from the lymph capillaries back to the blood supply, it's going to go through lymph nodes. And this is, again, where we're going to introduce the immune system into the process. Anatomy of a lymph node. Afferent vessels will take the lymph into the node. Efferent vessels will take it out of the node. Inside the lymph node are lymphocytes, and lymphocytes are a type of leukocyte, a type of white blood cell. So what happens is the lymph travels, as the lymph travels through the lymph node, if there's any microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, parasites in there, these lymphocytes will recognize will recognize that they are foreign and will start to engage the body in an attack against this microorganism. So again, lymphocytes will start to attack these foreign antigens. Why do lymph nodes get swollen? Most of the time it's because they're doing their job. If there's bacteria and viruses in there, what will happen is the immune system, the white blood cells, will, will induce an attack and so that will attract a bunch more white blood cells to that lymph node. So swollen lymph nodes tells you that there's an infection going on, but it also tells you that the body is fighting it off. Now, when they look at cancer, um, and they want to look whether the cancer has left the original tumor, they want to see if it's metastasized, they will look at lymph nodes. So in the case, let's say, of a woman with breast cancer, if she has breast cancer, they will test the lymph nodes in the axillary region, the armpit region. If the cancer cells are found in those lymph nodes, then they know that the tumor, cells from the tumor, have left the original tumor and have traveled throughout the body. This means they have to change the uh, diagnosis, not really change the diagnosis, but change the way they treat the cancer. They now have to treat the whole body because they know that those cells have left the original tumor. Now what's lymphedema? Lymphedema is basically swelling that you get due to the absence or malfunction of lymphatic vessels or valves or due to something that obstructs the lymphatic system. Uh, w if women do have a mastectomy and they have their breasts removed and they have the lymph nodes removed, what that does is it cuts the drainage down from their arm. So sometimes they can actually get severe swelling in their arm on the side where the lymph nodes were removed because they don't have a drainage pattern bringing that lymph back to the heart. And so here's examples of what can happen. You can see a normal hand in a hand with lymphedema. You can see the same thing in the leg here. Tonsils. Tonsils are a crucial part. They protect the entrance of the respiratory system. They're kind of like large lymph nodes. Why are they here? Because when you take something in through your mouth, you're much more likely to bring something foreign into your body. So they are a way of protecting against that. The problem is, is when they're constantly swollen, like you see here, these are the pharyngeal tonsils, which are called adenoids when they're, when they're swollen or infected like this. Um, they can cause lots of problems. They can actually hurt the person's ability to breathe. So if tonsils are constantly swollen, then they're usually and constantly infected. They're usually going to go in and take them out, again, because they can uh, limit breathing. And in this case, they can be very, very painful. So what they say is if you have your tonsils out, that you're more prone to infections without them. But if they're all always infected, then you usually want to get rid of them. Okay, this is part one of the lymph system. I will continue the next
part on the next screencast.